Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa liya salihin Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh khatam al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen Allahumma salli wa sallam ala abdika wa rasulika muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa man da'a bi da'watihi wa stanna bi sunnati ila yawm al-deen wa sallam tasliman kathira amma ba'd fa yaqul al-haq subhana a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim ya ayyuha al-lazina amunu attaqu allah wa kunu ma sadiqin all praises are due to allah lord of the worlds and surely Allah is the friend and protector of the righteous. And I bear witness that Allah is one and has no partners, and that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, is his servant and his last messenger. And may Allah always and constantly send peace and blessings to Muhammad, to his family and his companions, and all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, I begin by cautioning myself, reminding myself and you of the critical importance of taqwa, of the consciousness of God, that we should be aware of the creator of the heavens and the earth in everything that we do and recognize that his revelation was sent to guide us in all aspects of life. And we should remember in these times of deception, we should remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly stated, O you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah and be with the truthful. O you who believe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his infinite mercy to mankind, set down the last revelation. And this revelation although being in the Arabic language, which is a local language in a sense, was revealed in a divine form of the Arabic language, the highest level of classical Arabic, a language that could be memorized by people and understood by people who never spoke a word of it. And this miracle continues to grow and continues to spread and the Prophet ﷺ confirmed this when he said in an authentic hadith, Inna Allah hazawali al arda faraitu mashariqaha wa magharibaha wa inna ummati sayablughu mulkaha mazuyali minha. The Prophet ﷺ said, Verily Allah folded up the earth for me. And he showed me the east and he showed me the west. And the dominion of my nation would reach as far as he showed me in the east and the west. And so in this miraculous divine uh, look into the future, the Prophet ﷺ literally is given a vision of people far off in the east and far off in the west who are accepting Islam. And the more we travel in the earth, we see this miracle coming to pass. Last weekend, I delivered the Friday sermon in the central masjid in Kingston, Jamaica, an island in the Caribbean region just below Cuba. And after having been there doing Islamic work in the 80s and returning now so long since that time, I was surprised to see that the extent of the Muslims had spread so much in this area. In the 80s, we had one place to pray Salatul Jumu'ah, but now there are masjids all over the island. And there are people who are practicing Islam. And even to the extent of a young person from that island is one of a few who have memorized the whole Quran. And again, this is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Living so far away, but yet memorizing the whole of the book from the beginning to the end. 
and the Muslim community there that we traveled around throughout the countryside to visit is a microcosm. It's a small example of what is happening to us and what is happening all around the Muslim world. The Muslim community itself on externally is surrounded by a society that because of the change in modern life has become more and more corrupt. Corruption is appearing in many different parts within the society itself. And it is one of the main external struggles that the Muslim community has. But in the community itself, probably the greatest struggle they are facing is disunity. It is a disunity with having so many different people, but yet being disunited. And in terms of the world situation, in terms of corruption itself, if we look externally at the problem which is faced in this small island and here in the GTA and around the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in Surah Al-Rum, verse 41, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. Allah revealed in this last testament, this is over 1400 years ago, but we see it still happening now. Corruption has appeared on the land and the sea because of what humanity's hands have done. And we will make them taste something of what they have earned in order that they would return to the path. And so we see it come to pass, al-fasad fil bar, corruption on the land. And when the companions of the Prophet ﷺ looked at this, and it is enshrined in the great tafsir books, they looked at it that this corruption would come about because of dhunu bani adam because of the sins of humanity. This corruption would appear as pollution in the land. It would appear as uh, bad relationships economically between people, bad relationships between families. And subhanAllah, it is as though they were also blessed with a vision of the future. Because this economic corruption has spread throughout the world and the economic system of interest and usury which continues to spread and which continues to, to consume countries, to destroy their currencies. When you go to, to a currency as we did in this island nation which used to be five to one, now it is about 120 to one US dollar. The change that has come about, the economic corruption, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Also, in a social sense, social corruption, with the widespread phenomena of the television, of the handheld devices, corruption, immorality spreading throughout the world. And we see it coming to pass now in small countries with even families being broken up. And there is a danger now for young girls in the society. This is something which was never known before in the past in many of our nations. But because of the use of drugs, because of the economic corruption, people have become desperate and a type of evil, a type of social evil is controlling their minds so that people look more toward gambling than they look toward a decent living. They look toward magic. They look toward uh, occult instead of living an honest life. <clears throat> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained this evil, that this social corruption, al-fasad al-ijtima'i, would turn into a type of evil. 
And we see it in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 90, where Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed to us, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, innama al-khamru wal-maysiru wal-ansabu wal-azlam, ridsun min amil shaytan, fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. Allah has revealed, O you who believe, intoxication. It's all forms of drugs. Games of chance. Sacrificing to stones. Fortune telling by arrows are all an evil of the handiwork of the devil. Avoid this, stay away from this in order that you would be successful. And so we see these actions which many people would say, well this is innocent. I'm just taking a little drink. I'm just taking a little smoke. I'm just playing a little games of chance. I want to enjoy myself. I will go to uh, a fortune teller. I will bow down to anything that I want to. It is described as Ridsun min amil shaitan. And this is a powerful description because it's literally a filthy abomination. And we see the result that this has on the society itself where people would now exploit young children, would attack young children. Well, iyadhu billah. In this atmosphere, Muslims appear. Muslims appear in the dress of Islam, especially the women. Muslims appear openly praying, fasting. They appear openly trying to lead good lives, develop family. This is a good thing. And this should be, uh, this should be loved by people who have a natural feeling inside of themselves. And no doubt about it, it is loved by the people on the ground. But the people who would, uh, the people who control society, who control the economy, who control the political side, who are now controlling even our social life, now you can see where animosity would be toward Muslim. This animosity coming against us now that we are feeling here in Toronto, throughout the world, it's not just because we wear long clothes. It's not just because we pray. It's not just because we fast. Because there are many people who wear long robes. Many people who fast. But we have a, we have a clear teaching of the belief in one God. A clear teaching that separates all idols and all other forms of so-called gods and puts it on the side. We also have an interest-free system. We have an economic system of sharing. And this, if it is applied by the people of the world, would take down the present economic system. Our social life would turn people back to their families would protect individuals, especially the younger generation. Our political life would be a type of meritocracy. Not uh, the aristocrats, but it is meritocracy. In other words, the leader is the one who has the most merit, the one who deserves to be the leader. That type of thinking would go against the powerful oligarchs, and the powerful extreme leaders who take over based upon fear and greed. And so by using fear and greed, which has turned into a type of phobia, an Islamophobia, they are trying to reach the masses of the people. And so an average person on the ground, in speaking to an average person in the Caribbean region, on the ground, they would say, I love Islam. I love what you people do. But I'm afraid of the violence. I'm afraid of the violence. This is Islamophobia. So the violence is propagated into their mind where they know that modesty is the answer. They know that avoiding alcohol and drugs is the answer. 
They know that having a good family is the answer, but fear, the fear, the phobia, which is driven into them, causes them to step back. Reality is, we have more refugees, we have more people being killed, we have more people who are suffering than probably any other nation in the world. So the reality on the ground is totally different than what is propagated to people. And so we need to think now internally and externally. We need to look at solutions, to be solution-oriented when we are faced with the problems that are around us. Number one, we need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to make tawbah, tawbah tan nasuha, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to forgive us for the wrongs that we have done. And one of the great actions we can take is the mentality of unification. To look at the importance of unification. Because as a world nation, over 50 countries, a united block of 50 countries situated on much of the mineral resources of the world could dominate the whole planet. But divided, we are nation states, weak nation states, who can be tricked into fighting each other. And so the unity, the unity is a mercy. As the Prophet ﷺ said, it is a mercy. And firqa, the division, is a punishment. So with the division comes punishment. In the GTA, we are over 10% of the population. And a solid block of Muslims would have profound influence on the politics and the economics of the city and the province that we are living in. But divided, they can pick us off. And so they attack one masjid, send the Islamophobes around one masjid, and the other people say, well, that's not my masjid. I, I, I'm, that's not my school of thought. Those are not my tribe. Those are not my people. This is adab. It is a punishment. Because when the wolf attacks the sheep, they attack them one by one and they pick off the weaker ones. They pick off the ones who have strayed from the jama'ah. And that is where the Prophet ﷺ said, Yadullah ma'al jama'ah. The hand of Allah is with the united body. Woman shadda shadda finnar. And if you go against it, if you go off, you go into the fire. And so the Islamophobes, who in this part of the world, are not large numbers. But if we are tiny groups, isolated organizations, then the small group that they send to destabilize us can have a powerful force. United, as a united block, they would not influence us at all. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us about the fasad. Remember the fasad. Dhahar al-fasad fil barri wal baha. Remember what Allah said. In Surah Al-Anfal, verse 73, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ كَبِيرٌ Allah tells us the solution to the problem. And He tells us, and those unbelievers are allies and helpers one to another. So unless you do this, there will be trials and discord in the earth and there would be great corruption. Fasadun kabir. Without unity, fasad. That's the corruption. And so with the unity, we're able to deal with this. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us against this sickness and the sickness of hizbiyya, organizational fanaticism. And in one authentic hadith, this is reported in Sayyid Bukhari, volume 1, book 8, no, number 386. The Prophet Sallallahu the translation has said, whoever prays like us and faces our qibla 
and eats our slaughtered animals is a Muslim and is under Allah and his Prophet's protection. So do not betray Allah by betraying those who are in his protection. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh, who was considered to be the greatest of the companions in his wisdom and his qada, his ability to judge. In speaking about this, he said once to the people of Iraq, judge as you used to judge, for I hate differences. He said, I hate differences and I will do my best till the people unite as one group or I die as my companions have died. And so Ali radiallahu an said very clearly, one group, I will struggle and struggle until we are one group. Or I will leave this world like my companions left, like the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu who were one group. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari, volume five, book 57, number 56. So we need to learn to accept differences between us, to cherish variety amongst the Muslims, but see ourselves as the people of the Qibla. The people of the Qibla, as flowers are different, as birds are different, as the whole world has variety, the Muslim world also has variety, which is under the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when the opposite happens, when the opposite happens, then corruption appears. And we make no mistake, we are under a major movement to put out the light of Allah. But this is not new. It happened over and over again and Muslims came back from this. In the time of Musa alayhi salam, is one of the clearest times brought to us clearly in the Quran. When the Muslims were now rising, now in that case it was Beni Israel. And so the people in the Congress or the Parliament of Egypt, they came to Fir'aun and they said, what will you do? These people are rising up. And he said, which is enshrined in Surah Al-A'raf, the Fir'aun then said, Qala sanuqattilu abna'ahum wa nastahyi nisa'ahum wa inna fawqahum qahirun. He said, we will kill their young boys and we will keep the girls alive to control them. And verily, we have supremacy over them. We are supreme over them. Look at the thinking now that is happening in the world. Destroy the males, especially the young males. Control the women, control their minds, and establish supremacy in the land. Musa answered very clearly, Qala Musa li qawmihi sta'inu billahi wasbiru. Inna al-arda lillahi yurituha min yasha'u min ibadi wal aqibatu lil muttaqin. Musa salam, answered to his people and he said, O my people, seek your help from Allah and be patient. Surely this earth belongs to Allah and he will give it to whom he pleases from his worships. And the best reward is for those who have taqwa, the consciousness of Allah. That is the best reward. They will ultimately be victorious. And so we find ourselves living in the era of another wave. But alhamdulillah, in the past, as now, Muslims have stood up. The difference is now that because of the media, there are many people from the Christian community, from the Jewish community, from Hindu, from Buddhists, from other communities who are now standing with us. People be, used to be afraid to pray in the airports in America. We were afraid, we were nervous. Make your salat sitting down in the chair or around the corner. Now they made salat and non-Muslim people circled them to protect them. Protection of non-Muslim people. So out of this evil, there is good that is coming. Out of this evil, there are people not from our community who are now identifying with us. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
our job internally, we have to unite. We have to break down differences, celebrate our variety, and go forward as one united body. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clear our hearts of any tribalism and hatred. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the innocent children of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah protect our families and may Allah give victory to the Muslims throughout this world. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ili muslimini min kulli dhambin istaghfiru innahu hu ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah al-wahid al-ahad al-fard al-samad الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء ومرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد يا عباد الله اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم ويقولوا صلى الله عليه وسلم إن لكل أمة فتنة وفتنة أمتي المال ويقول الحق سبحانه مخبرا وآمنا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحاب أجمعين ورد الله عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبو بكر عمر عثمان وعلي وأنا برحمتك أهم رحمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لو لا أن هدانا الله ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله يرحمكم الله إن الله يأم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون قوموا إلى صلاتكم